All right, let's take a look at number 48. Um, pretty easy question to solve, actually, um, but it does involve some things that we've learned before. Uh, the work done by the force, if you push with 150 newtons, a distance of six meters. Well, that's pretty easy because for A, isn't work equal to force times distance? That sure looks like a force, that sure looks like a distance, and it is that simple. All right, let's do B, and that is, what is the coefficient of kinetic friction? Well, we know that uh, the force of friction is equal to mu times the normal, which is mass times gravity, correct? This is uh, back from last chapter, and I promised you we wouldn't get into it, but I lied. I didn't know. I forgot, okay? Don't kill me. So uh, we know that the force of friction is 150 newtons. Now, that's because of the special wording, and that is the crate moves with a constant velocity. Remember, when something is moved with a constant velocity, that force is equal to the force of friction. Um, we're looking for the mu value, so we're just going to write mu. We know the mass, it's a 40 kilogram crate, so 40 kgs. Oh my gosh, and we know what gravity is. Is it really that simple, Mr. Olive? 150 um, divided by 9.8 times 40, and the answer to that question is, yeah, it's that easy. So that's how you get the mu values for number... All right, let's look at number 52. First thing I would do is I would draw a picture to represent what we're looking at here. And that is we've got a scenario like this where you've got a skier who's coming off a track like this that is 50 meters high here and 10 meters high here. We know that the angle that he's leaving at here is 45 degrees. And I think that's all we know. And what you need to recognize is this is just a real simple um, roller coaster problem, okay? We know that the PE here at the top has to be equal to the PE and the KE here at uh, the end of the slide. We'll just call this the end. Now, why does it have PE? Because he's up in the air. So he has PE and KE. Well, that's real simple. Let's write out the equations. We know that it's MGH at the top is equal to one half mv squared at a plus mgh at a or i'm calling the end a now it's just real common to do that well look at uh, masses cancel don't they do we know gravity yeah do we know the height of the top yeah 50. that's equal to one half my velocity at a, and that's what we're looking for what speed does he leave with and um, do i know gravity yes do i know the height at the end here yeah 10. So you know everything you need here to solve for A. You're gonna get this product, subtract it from this side, double it, square root it, boom, you got the height that he leaves with. Now the second question is, what is the maximum height attained? So this is A. That we're gonna to have to go back and use kinematics. Oh my gosh, but it's not that hard. Watch guys. I know that we're looking for the height. Remember, what is the speed of any object at its highest point? Zero, so we're gonna use this one. VFY squared equals VIY squared plus 2A delta Y. All right, we know that the final velocity is zero. Here's the million dollar question. Why did they tell us he left at 45 degrees? He's not going straight up, he's going at an angle. If you remember from uh, mechanics, when you're shooting something at an angle, it's not just the speed that he leaves with the answer in A squared, it's the answer from A times the sine of 45 squared. Why? Because not all of that speed is going up. Only the sine of 45 of it is. So the answer from A times the sine of 45 squared plus two times a negative 9.8 delta Y. And what we're looking for is delta Y. What's the maximum height obtained? So we take this answer. Look how easy this is. The answer from A times the sine of 45 squared Move it to the other side, subtract it, divide it by a negative 19.6, a negative divided by a negative, boom, you get delta Y. Are you done? No, ah, you're going crazy. So you get your delta Y, that's how high he goes. But remember, ding, 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 ding. He didn't start on the ground, he started 10 meters up. So it's this answer plus 10. That is the maximum height he will achieve from the ground, okay? So I hope that's pretty easy to get. I think the way I've done it here, I think you can solve it from this point on, yeah?